Hi there, welcome to Exam AZ 900, Microsoft Azure Fundamental Study Guide. This is episode 42, Azure Artificial Intelligence Products. My name is Tim Warner. Today's skill in the Microsoft Azure Fundamentals Exam AZ 900 objective domain starts with the functional group called Describe Core Azure Services, goes through the objective, describe some of the solutions available on Azure, and our specific skill is Describe AI and AI products such as Azure Machine Learning Service and Studio. As usual, on the right, timw.info forward slash az900sg is the interactive study guide or table of contents for this study guide. Now, note two things before I get into the content. Remember, and I'm reminding myself as much as I'm reminding you, that Azure Fundamentals is not supposed to be a deep technical exam, so we're going to take this humongous subject of AI and machine learning, and we're gonna distill it to the top line points that you need to know for your exam success. You should know that there's an entire portfolio of artificial intelligence products in Azure, but the objective is only asking about Azure Machine Learning Service and Studio, so that's what I'll teach. Let's proceed. In a nutshell, what are AI and ML? AI stands for artificial intelligence, and it refers to the process of training a computer such that it can mimic human thought. Things like making predictions based on past experience or technically on past data sets and analysis of those data sets. Classification is another broad category of artificial intelligence. We could be talking about something like facial recognition, sentiment analysis. Is this face that I've detected happy, sad, depressed? What color is this? What kind of plant is it? Machine learning is actually a subset within the field of artificial intelligence, and specifically it deals with stuff like prediction and classification. Artificial intelligence can actually go far beyond just doing predictions and classifications, but in machine learning, that's mostly what we do where computers use existing data and are trained, and that process of training a machine learning product is called model development, and then that model is used to interpret new incoming data, and you can forecast future behaviors, outcomes, and trends. ML we see every day, both in Azure and outside of Azure. Think about any algorithm that a web application has where it can, based on your past browsing history or at Amazon, think of your past purchase history, we think you would like these products. Or another Amazon product, audible.com, I've been an audiobook fan for most of my life. Based on your past reading, we think that you would like these. Those are all predictions that have come about through machine learning model development. When you talk to data science professionals and AI ML specialists, they'll often talk about that this process of machine learning is where computers learn without being explicitly programmed to do so. Now there's two Azure machine learning or AML as it's sometimes called services or products in Azure. This one, Azure Machine Learning Studio Classic, is legacy. It's around, I think, to support customers that started with this product when it was all that was available, but it's not what I recommend you use for any present or future work with machine learning model development in Azure. I call the Machine Learning Studio, the classic experience, V1 of the Microsoft ML platform. And the biggest issue with this, and Microsoft realized it, and that's why they revamped to version 2, the Azure Machine Learning Service, is that the Learning Studio Classic relies upon a proprietary machine learning model format as well as proprietary compute targets. Training a machine learning model is going to be CPU, memory, disk, and network intensive. And one of the benefits of the public cloud is essentially limitless compute. And proprietary is not a good fit in something like machine learning because the whole idea, at least what I've observed of the artificial intelligence machine learning community, it's about open source software where everybody can see each other's scripts and everybody's standardizing or at least attempting to standardize on data formats. So Microsoft realized that. There's also no concept of a pipeline in the classic experience, nor is there an automated machine learning. Microsoft completely revamped the service, and the current gen is called Azure Machine Learning or Azure Machine Learning Service. You see that the icon looks like a beaker. If I go back to the previous slide, I forgot to mention this. In the Azure portal, if you search for machine learning, you'll see several classic. Those you don't want to use, as I said, unless you're working with a group who have already worked in that environment and they plan to continue to do so. 
that bottom icon is what we want. And I'll show you this in the demo upcoming. So we want to use the Azure Machine Learning Service, and it's completely supportive of open source, vendor neutral, standards-based algorithms, data formats, model formats, and compute targets. We also have a graphical designer workspace and the concept of the machine learning pipeline where you can do the entire workflow of training a machine learning model in a way where you feed one step into another. It's really quite beautiful. And there's also a concept of automated ML. So these are all features to where it makes machine learning in Azure more approachable to people who don't yet have that expertise. Eventually, yes, if you're going to specialize in AI and ML, you're going to have to learn Python programming, it seems to me, maybe R, maybe Scala as well. And you'll also have to get deep under the covers in terms of things like feature selection and choosing a machine learning algorithm, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I think you'll find that the way that Microsoft set up this workspace is that it's a collaborative environment where different people and different job roles can all collaborate together on these machine learning projects. And the pipeline can actually take you right out to the point of deploying your model and attaching it via a web service to anything you want, like an application, just an API endpoint where you can consume that model and send new data at it, and it will do whatever classification or prediction you've trained the model to do. It's really a beautiful product. This is a graphic from the Azure Machine Learning documentation, the highest level workflow steps. So number one, we train a model. And what you're doing there is taking a lot of source data, the more the better, and you're trying out different algorithms to analyze data and look for patterns in it. The idea is to fit the data to the best pattern to get the most accurate results. Once you've done that, you can package, validate, and deploy the model, typically as a web service endpoint, and then you can monitor the results over time. That is, how accurate is the model behaving as you're giving new data to it? And you periodically may want to go back and retrain to further sharpen the behavior of the machine learning model. Now, let's get into a brief demo. In this demonstration, I'm going to show you the highest level elements of the Azure Machine Learning Service. Here I am logged into the portal, and I'm going to browse to the machine learning blade. Again, if you start to type machine learning, you'll see a reference to the current product version as well as the legacy machine learning studio. Remember, we want to go to the machine learning blade, and your first step is to create a workspace. This is going to be your collaborative environment where you and your colleagues work together on data science AI ML projects. Let's open up the workspace, and we've got on the left the settings, the Azure control plane, where your Azure administrators, for example, can set up your compute targets. Remember, AI ML is going to be a processor resource-intensive process, and Microsoft developed this machine learning workspace such that it's accessible to both data scientists, infrastructure people, developers, and beyond. I've created a compute cluster called, unimaginatively enough, Compute Target. And depending upon how intensive your grinding or your workload is, you can resize the virtual machine and have them expand to multiple instances so that you can shorten your development time. Let's go over to the overview blade and scroll down. We actually get into the studio separately from the Azure portal. If we click launch now, it takes us to an entirely different domain, ml.azure.com. And there's lots and lots of help available. The first time you log in, as you see here, you'll be prompted to do a tour. I'm going to give you a personalized tour. You can see on the left, the settings are divided into authoring steps, that is developing or authoring a machine learning model, assets, which are the building blocks of your machine learning experiments. And then under manage, you have your infrastructure, your compute clusters, and particularly your data stores where you're storing your source data. And your options here are very flexible. Another thing that you'll note about the Microsoft Azure Machine Learning Service is that it integrates in so many ways seamlessly with the rest of Microsoft Azure. That is, you can store your source data in Azure Blob Storage or in Azure Data Lake Storage or in an Azure File Share, or you can upload directly from your computer. Actually, you can see if you open the new data store button, we can see the various and sundry data store types, including databases. I forgot about those. All right, so let's close out of that and bring up the navigation again. Wanted to briefly show you the ML designer and the automated ML features. Another element you'll see is that these authoring tools is that you can work with samples. In fact, that's what I've actually done. 
I've run through this sample one, which is a regression model type. That's another term for prediction. And it's meant to take a bunch of properties of an automobile and make a prediction of the price or cost of that machine. Let me go to a pipeline run that I've run recently and just show you what the workspace looks like. This is a graphical workspace. And this is a read-only view because I'm showing a run. Let me actually go back to the pipelines page and let's just go to pipeline drafts to show you the actual underlying structure because this is really impressive. The idea is normally that's pretty similar when you're training a model regardless of the environment. You have to get your raw data and import that in. You then might want to take just a subset of that data, selecting certain columns. It could be a CSV file or a whole stack of CSV files, whatever the case may be. You want to clean the data, in this case, remove rows that are missing values. And then a common pattern with something like a regression model is that you split the data normally in a 70%, 30% way, where the training set is 70%, and then you use the other 30% as a way to score and verify that the model is making accurate predictions. Notice that you can literally drag and drop these connectors, and the blocks or modules come from over here on the left. There's a whole bunch of these, many of which allow you to work with algorithms without knowing how to program. Notice that there's an execute R script where you can upload a script that maybe one of your data scientist colleagues has created, but you can integrate it and keep on trucking with your model development and deployment without knowing how to program yourself. That's pretty cool. Ultimately, these blocks are interactive, so you can select them. If we go into outputs and logs, we can actually visualize the results here. And in this case, in this pipeline draft, again, it's showing the columns from the source data. And if I scroll all the way over to the right, this particular example takes the calculated price, the actual selling price of these different vehicles. Let me scroll back to the left. Toyota, Dodge, Volvo, based on all of these properties, length, width, wheelbase, etc. Those are what are called features in the machine learning world. And the scored labels column is the actual prediction that the ML model is making. And you see it's tracking fairly closely. The idea of fitting your model is to get the predictions to be as close as possible to the reference data, but not overfitting. There's kind of a Goldilocks and the three bears, just enough notion here that underlines machine learning. The other thing, because I know we're getting long, I don't like these videos to be very long, is the automated ML run. And this is especially compelling because it allows you to send data into an experiment and Azure will throw a whole bunch of algorithms at it and then give you a list of the models, including at the top, the recommended model that fit the data the best. You can see this AUC weighted value is very close to one, only marginally higher than some of the others. So the idea is even without understanding the specifics of all these algorithms, you can run this auto ML and at least be well on your way to deploying the best or closest fitting model for your source data. For learning resources, number one, the Azure Machine Learning Basics page is a good place to start, timw.info forward slash AAI1. Nice docs article on choosing an ML technology. This, if you're interested in learning the other product members in the Azure AI ML space, go to timw.info forward slash AAI2. And lastly, if I piqued your curiosity about auto ML, you can read more about it and learn more about it by pointing your browser to timw.info forward slash AAI3. Thank you, as always, for joining me in this lesson. I appreciate you. In the next episode, we'll cover Azure Dev Test Labs. In the meantime, you can follow me on Twitter at Tech Trainer Tim, view all my Pluralsight courses at timw.info forward slash PS, or visit my website at techtrainertim.com. Thanks again. Take good care.